What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today I'm bringing you something a little bit different Those of you that have been on my Outrider streams or had heard me talk about this in the past Know that I have a long turret love affair with turrets on the Technomancer and wanting to make them viable Due to certain patches that we've had in the recent uh, you know, couple of weeks. This is by far the most viable version of this build now, I think. And uh, it's still not top, top tier. Of course, it is still beaten in terms of DPS and overall raw potential by something like a Blighted Rounds Technomancer or for that matter, Pyromancers running, you know, Ash Blast Overheat or Phaser or something like that. But is this a build that can complete CT15 goals easily? Absolutely. Is this a build that is really good in single and multiplayer situations? Absolutely. And last but not least, is this a build that is fun to play and gives you a lot of utility to not only control yourself, but also to offer to your party in the co-op scenario? Absolutely. So without any further ado, let's fucking go. <laughs> So getting down and dirty with the build, basically the point here is the buffs that I was referring to earlier was a buff to how the cryo turrets hail shot mod works and that basically it deals more damage now. It gets more damage from your status power. So that's definitely going to be a priority for us to stack that as much as possible. Bear in mind that the idea for this build is that I want the star of the build to be the turrets. I want the turrets to deal decent damage or at least offer insane utility in locking down uh, enemies that are running at you so that you can very comfortably sort of take them out and uh, and basically play around that again this also works extremely well in multiplayer situations where you are locking down all of these enemies for your partners to also shoot but basically what it comes down to is um, we also have the borealis set which is now 100 completely working and of course the borealis set gives you increased damage to frozen enemies by 90 percent which is just huge okay but first of all looking at it from a weapon perspective one other thing which i also wanted to do was i wanted to try and create something that didn't incorporate moaning winds that didn't incorporate fortress um and uh, basically kind of like future proof the build in that way so that if any of those mods do catch a nerf which is kind of likely at this point in time that uh, that wouldn't really be a problem for you also maybe you haven't been able to find fortress yet you haven't been able to find um, you know uh, the, the the gun that gives you that or basically you know the animoy or you know i'm talking about the death shield of course jesus my mouth is really struggling with that so you haven't found a death shield or you haven't found an animoy so in this particular case what i'm using is i'm using the damascus offering and there's two reasons why i do the damascus offering that i have here has an extremely high this is essentially a god roll it's the highest damage roll that you can get and claymore torrent on this is just really really strong at pushing out aoe damage now the name of the game is you're going to be locking down a lot of stuff and stuff's going to be standing around being frozen and everything like that and a lot of the times they're going to be standing around in clusters so this just enhances the damage potential that damascus offering can drop down on them every four seconds with claymore torrent and what i do in this particular case here is i pair it with dark sacrifice the reason for this being that you're going to have four seconds then you're going to see a claymore torrent then four seconds then you're going to see a claymore torrent uh, what Dark Sacrifice helps here is it just helps to ramp up your weapon damage sufficiently to still be able to just deal good damage with your main gun in the times when the Claymore Torrent isn't actually dropping down. Now, is that the only option that you can use? No, absolutely not. It's quickly... Oh, I'm already standing here. Let's just go over here and I can give you some alternatives as to what's also a possibility for you to use. Now, of course, stuff that I've tested this with is Bone Shrapnel. Bone Shrapnel is exceptionally good as well. Um, your, your aim with, with your main weapon that you're using can be either that you want to introduce as much AOE damage as possible or that you want to have the best of both worlds. In other words, something that deals decent AOE, but uh, something that also deals decent single point damage. So again, like I said, you have options here. You can have Dark Sacrifice. You can have Bone Shrapnel is really good. Um, I've experimented with Icebreaker, which is even more AOE damage. Since you're freezing everything, this just does even more damage to them as well uh ultimate storm whip is also fantastic even because that even got a buff most recently so that's also pulling down quite a bit of damage 
um i mean if you want to you can absolutely pull fortress into this as well and fortress is just going to accentuate your damage overall plus this actually increases your turrets you know damage as well so it's ob obviously an extremely good you know option but like i said in the case of this and the way that i play it at the moment right now i'm just basically using this now um getting back to the build itself uh, I, I I have other weapons on here, but I'm basically just keeping the Damascus offering out the entire time and shooting with it. Again, like I said, what's very important is that whichever weapon you end up settling up on, please make sure that it has status power on it. Because you want to be stacking as much status power as possible. As you can see, I have almost 180%. Because there's a mod we're going to be using that basically increases your cryo turrets damage by the amount of status power that you have, which is huge. So starting off with the headpiece of course we've got the crown of the borealis uh here we've got bonus firepower status power and long range damage that is a fairly decent stat combination or sub stat combination for this build here however this build would be insane in my opinion if we could get all five pieces to have anomaly power on them because your turrets of course derive their bullet potential from anomaly power and this would just make your turrets like little fucking you know packages of death but unfortunately because we do want the borealis buff that 90 percent extra to frozen is fucking huge uh so we definitely do want that we are kind of forced to take these three pieces the other two pieces of the borealis give you health which doesn't help us in you know at all now when we are when we are using the crown of borealis here you can see that basically um we've got our first mod which is twins and this is why i call this the triple threat build because in actual fact we have three turrets out at all times so we've got two cryos and one blighted turret so then the second mod that we have here is increased damage which basically just means that each one of your cryo turret shots deals additional bit of damage anything that you can stack onto that damage just makes those little turrets you know all the more juicy um then we've got our chest piece which has ice icicle storm on it um cold snap is your massive aoe ability that you also use in this case and icicle storm makes cold snap extremely op because anytime that you hit and kill one of those frozen item, uh, you know mobs that have been frozen by cold snap they basically radiate out an aoe explosion and this can chain so if you hit like a whole group of mods it basically chains all the way down the line and kills everything um i also then have the tier 3 mod shatter on here because you want to be stacking as much damage to frozen stuff as you can because stuff is going to be frozen 24 fucking 7 uh with this build on the pants we have long winter which basically increases the overall radius of cold snap now cold snaps default radius is not fairly large um you can absolutely play around um uh, having a smaller cold uh, cold snap and then possibly put something else in here for sure but i like the fact that i have this because again in a multiplayer situation you might be very split out from your teammates and this helps to cover the mobs that are around them as well still with the cold snap uh on here i have my second you know damage against frozen targets increase ability or mod which is freezing boost then when we get over to the gloves this is in my opinion probably the best stat combination for this particular build because again like i said the star of this build needs to be the turrets so anomaly power cooldown reduction and status power you could go with anomaly power um skills life leads and status power that's also okay but you do however want to have quite a bit of cooldown reduction because cold snaps uh global cooldown is quite long so anything that you can do to sort of chip away at that is also going to be very beneficial to you on here we have the mod that i was referring to which is hail shot now you'll notice that not only do i have status power on my weapon here but i also have it on every single one of my pieces of gear and that means that we're getting the maximum possible benefit to the the cryo turret from state from hell shot this increases its damage with status bar now no this isn't a new change to the mod it always did this what they did with the patches they increased the coefficient so the status bar just adds more damage to it now which is really good then on here i also have ice component because by default blighted turret poison stuff so it causes toxic uh where this just changes it to freeze and it's just another source of freeze damage remember that all of your damage is 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 multiplied against stuff that's frozen so it's in your own best interest to freeze stuff as much as possible then lastly we get to the boots here uh i have bonus duration on here which is kind of like 
uh one which i would farm for and change out you don't really need the extended duration for the crowd turrets because by the time that they run out if you have at least two pieces with cooldown reduction on then your next batch of turrets are ready to go so you don't really need this per se and we could obviously get something else in here that maybe boosts up your anomaly power a little bit more or if for some reason and we'll talk about this just now but if for some reason you are struggling with survivability then you could put a survivability mod in here but that's really not going to be a problem and then last but not least we have captain hunter in here uh trash mobs die like fucking nothing to this build so the real you know test for your damage is basically anything that comes in an elite category and this just helps you deal with that now as you can gather from having discussed the armor pieces already our skills are going to be then cold snap we're going to use cryo turret and we're going to use blighted turret you'll immediately notice that we have extremely low cooldowns on most of these so cold snaps coming in at 13.4 you want to get this as close to 10 as possible because we don't really use this only for defense we use it offensively as well so it's quite common in certain you know situations that you basically push into an area and then you kind of like wait until some the stuff starts sort of clustering together and then you run up to them and you cold snap them and then you initiate your combo by just breaking everything apart with icicle storm so uh having quicker cooldowns on this means that you can do it more often uh, and basically just you know pull off this great combo like all the time as i've mentioned your cryo turret is on a 14.4 and that's 14.4 then you throw two turrets then 14.4 and then you throw two turrets now um they last um you know long enough so that this this time situation never becomes an issue in fact a lot of the time your turrets are still up shooting when you already have the next batch ready and you kind of do this whole thing where when you move through the map you're basically moving your turrets with you the whole time so you move into an area you put on your three turrets you start shooting you cold snap you fucking break the stuff and then kind of like further down the line stuff starts coming towards you so you move your little camp of turrets a little bit ahead and you just like redeploy them out again blighted turret is on a super low cooldown of 6.5 so you will have this thing out like with lickety split almost the entire time and again this this does far less damage than the cryo turret but uh the but this at least also does frozen damage now and it also freezes stuff so yeah when we get over to the class tree uh of course we're gonna go mid tree so we're going tech shaman uh there's two reasons for this you get a lot of survivability in the mid tree so you basically become almost impossible to kill i would say especially the way that i have it set up and you also offer a lot of utility to your team so when we go through the motions here this is just an extra one here you could do anything with this additional point i just like the additional six percent of anomaly that i get there but basically you're just going through here and you're trying to pick up as much cooldown reduction as you can when you get to the middle point here i go up one point to get blur screen this basically increases your health regeneration threshold by 20 percent of your max health now why is this important because we are using dark sacrifice so dark sacrifice in combat basically chips away at your life to the point of where you have your regen portion if you have a higher regen threshold then dark threshold uh, sorry dark uh, sacrifice does not go past that let me show you so as you can see here basically uh, we don't go down past that point there so this is massive and this makes dark sacrifices effect of like draining your life much less of a problem to this build furthermore you have so much skills life leech as it's boosting this build up the entire time that this really you know isn't a problem um or rather that dark sacrifice and basically being low life is not a problem then at the same time we're also going down and we're getting a wipeout now uh, i find wipeout works really well because the point is you have not just yourself as a damage source but also three turrets so a lot of the times when you're shooting then a lot of the enemies will be dropped low to almost near to death you know and at this point in time if turrets are shooting at them they're dealing like you know basically 20 percent more damage and it just basically takes care of them a lot quicker i do say basically a lot don't i <laughs> okay then when we get to adrenalizing antenna this is quite good because basically <laughs> see there you go every time when you throw out blighted turret then you increase the anomaly power of not just you but also your allies of 30 percent so pyromancers that are running around with you will love you for this they bas they basically they get a lot of additional anomaly power um i should install some kind of a filter that bas that basically just turns that into something else wow okay so then the next one is exposing frost this is that every time when you freeze an afflicted uh when sorry when freeze is afflicted on an enemy it gets vulnerable status as well this means they take more damage 
and then if you take mark for execution it accentuates that vulnerable effect so that it basically it makes it even more powerful i almost said it there then um you are getting you know stuff that makes your freeze last longer you're getting more weapons life leech and then you get here to doctor of medicine this increases the healing to you and your allies by 20 percent so there's that great synergy and utility that you bring to the group and then we also have overclocked overclocked is hella powerful it is essentially your um phoenix ability so if you die for some reason i've never actually seen this proc <laughs> since i picked it up but you can you can come back to you know from death one time with this every 180 seconds but also anytime you activate a gadget skill so this is when you throw down a cold snap or when you throw out your cryo turret then uh you increase the anomaly power and the weapon damage of your um of your character by 40 percent for 10 seconds which again is quite massive now that's it basically for the build <laughs> uh, and i'm gonna leave you with some gameplay in the background here and uh, let me know in the comments down below if you like this kind of build and if you're gonna try and play it and if you have played it or uh, I i'm sure that there's other people out there that are uh, half as obsessed with turrets as i am but definitely give it a try it is a fun build and you know in this time when we're when we're kind of like i suppose growing tired of some of the more cookie cutter builds and also waiting to hear what's going to happen to the mods which we use in those cookie cutter builds it's probably good to start looking elsewhere for other things that might be you know a little bit more viable of course um the only thing that really is a problem for this build is that you kind of have to play hyper aggressive a lot because you are still trying to get that gold you know finish time once that goes off the table by them basically maybe pushing out the um the expansion times who knows if that will ever happen then this becomes an even more comfortable build to play but that's it thank you so much for watching especially if you made it this far and it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning a great afternoon and a great evening wherever you are and until next video fucking cheers